Hi guys, my name is Christina and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about all the books I read in the month of, of January. I was just about to say February. Wow. So I had a pretty good reading month in January and I can't wait to share them with you guys. So I'm going to start out with the DNF book of the month just because I'm not really counting it towards my overall January count but I didn't want to mention it because I did read a bit of it. So the book I ended up DNFing was The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen and I think I listened to the audiobook and I was only like 30% in when I decided to DNF it. <clears throat> so this is the first book in a duology and honestly I can't even tell you a single thing about it. Not even like literally zip nothing and I was kind of upset about it because I know this book was pretty hyped when it first came out but I guess wrong book wrong time or something that's that saying <laughs> but I was kind of that was like the first book I think I picked up in the month of January and it just wasn't the right fit I won't be counting DNF books no matter how much of it I've read towards my Goodreads goal because I used to do that in the past but now I'm not gonna do that anymore because it's kind of like I didn't really finish you but I didn't want to ask you guys because there are a few books I DNF that are really loved and popular I'm thinking like should I give them another chance because I have filmed a video in the past where I reread all the books I DNF'd and I actually ended up liking a couple of them that I DNF'd like a few years ago but I love them today and as we grow as readers our reading style and preference changes so I'm wondering if I should do another one of those videos and if so let me know in the comments below Next, after that book, I ended up picking up a series that is very loved. And the first book in that series is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I did not know anything about this series jumping into it. All I knew was my friends loved this series so much and they were so happy that I finally picked it up because I had the whole box set for a while. I forgot the main character's name because I always forget the names. Oh, so you follow some, uh, your main character named Audrey Rose who is sneaking around to become kind of like a morgue apprentice for her uncle but she sneaks around behind her dad's back because you know in this era 1800s women weren't really doctors they were more like pretty much baby baby givers and like they had to be ladylike and crochet and you know all that boring stuff um <laughs> But she would sneak around, go to uncle's morgue and help him cut up cadavers and learn all about the healthcare industry pretty much during that time. And while she's doing that, there's a serial killer named Jack the Ripper killing prostitutes, kind of based off the real unsolved mystery of Jack the Ripper. And it's just so cool. You know, I really like the story. I love her sneaking around, her being a badass woman and solving this mystery while also like learning. And it's like, th this character didn't, didn't let anyone walk all over her because she was a woman. And I just love that strong female energy. So of course I gave this five out of five stars. I loved it so much. I picked up the sequel right away and that was Hunting Prince Dracula. And in this one, you follow the main character and her partner. I think his name was Thomas. Um, yes. Oh, I remembered him. I love Thomas in this series. He is like such a flirt. Um, you follow them. I think they travel to Transylvania or Romania or something like that um, to attend a university for science and um, all of that. And of course, they end up finding dead bodies. Dead bodies just follow them around and the bodies are found um, drained of blood and so they assume people are saying rumors in the town assuming that Dracula's back he's sucking up people's blood and blah 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 I really enjoyed it and you meet a lot of new characters but I did feel like some of the story kind of dragged on in this one compared to the first book so I did end up giving it four stars out of five I really loved the ending. It was such a huge cliffhanger that I ended up picking up the next book right away and that was Escaping Houdini which is the third book in the series and once again you follow Audrey Rose and Thomas and they are on a ship to America and while they're on this ship Houdini is there performing and of course there are women, it's always women, who are being killed off during these magic tricks and they're trying to figure out who is doing this, who is causing this 
disruption within the show and blah 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 i didn't really like this one as much as the other two i gave this book three stars because i felt like our main character was very out of her head in this one because in the other two first two books she's a very strong independent woman she doesn't let people walk all over her she doesn't take orders from anyone she is very like confident in herself but in this one she's com in like completely opposite she lets a guy dictate her he lets she lets him tell her what to do what to wear where to go um she's kind of like lost and like kind of dazed with everything and then she questions her partner thomas's choices and tips throughout this whole entire book even though like he was with her from day one like i don't know it just it was very off character for me and the love triangle in this book i thought was very unnecessary and stupid so i was kind of disappointed it was still a fun read because i love the magic and the mystery and the tricks and stuff that houdini played in this book but other than that i was kind of disappointed in our main character in this one next i did end up picking up the fourth book which i heard a lot of people didn't like i didn't like the third book so i was kind of like worried about the fourth book but i actually ended up giving um capturing the devil four stars i really enjoyed this one i i kind of understood why some people didn't like it i kind of i didn't like who they brought back in this book but i was kind of like oh my gosh but i did really enjoy it i thought it was a great ending to the series and i would love to see this as a tv show through like I don't know cbs or hbo or something i think it would be awesome i really enjoy this one and you follow once again you follow audrey rose and thomas in america and i can't really mention what the mystery is because it'll spoil a few things but something comes back to haunt them and they have to deal with it and it's kind of cray cray but i highly recommend this series i really enjoyed it and i would love a tv show um and i would love to reread it someday because it was such a fun trip after this i kind of fell into i wouldn't say a slump but after i read like a series that's more than two or three books i kind of get really tired so i kind of wanted to read something a bit more nostalgic and easy and fun um i was also very sick after this and i'm still kind of congested but i ended up picking up twilight and i did film a vlog of this so if you guys want to check it out it's on my channel highly recommend watching it I ended up picking up Twilight after reading it 14 years ago, I think. Like, it, it was a long time. And it was so fun. When you're sick, I highly recommend picking up and rereading a classic or a book that really got you in, into reading. This was, like, my, one of my first fantasy romances ever. So, I don't know. The writing was awful. And there was there's so many grammar and editing errors in this book but it was still such a fun read to read while you're sick but also in a reading mood but you know your brain can't process new content <laughs> um but yeah it was fun and of course i gave it five out of five stars because it's it started my bookish loving industry obsession so twilight um after twilight i was still kind of feeling blah and i really wanted a thriller and an audiobook because that's like the best thing to do when you're kind of recovering and you want to like get up and move instead of sit around and lay around and i ended up picking up all the dangerous things by stacy willingham this was such a great audiobook i gave it five out of five stars it's about a mother whose son was taken from her in the middle of the night and she goes out and to kind of share awareness to um, podcasts and television tv shows and interviews telling her about her story how her son got missing and she just wants to keep his image alive and they never found the body they have like no type of um, research and then this one guy says that he runs a podcast and he wants to interview her and see if there's any way his viewers and himself well his listeners can help solve the case because they have solved cases for the police before so she agrees to do this podcast and she ends up unraveling a lot of secrets and her husband is asking her to stop the podcast stop in the interviews just try to move on because he has after like a couple of years or a year or something and she just found that very suspicious and she just didn't like that she wants to keep her son's story alive and she just goes through solving the mystery of her missing son and it is so good highly recommend it it gave me like um then she was gone vibes by lisa jewel so if you enjoyed that book highly recommend this one and i love the audiobook i think the narrator did a very good job next i ended up picking up the prison healer by lynette 
Noni and this is a YA fantasy about a girl named Kiva who is a a healer. She's kind of like I want to say a doctor but like kind of and she is when she was little she was taken to this big prison center that is like very hard to escape it's like this huge facility and she ends up being a healer where she like you know takes care of the sick prisoners um and also treats the new ones that are coming coming in in order for them to be healthy and strong to do all the labor work that the prison requires their prisoners to do and all of that and you kind of go through the book unraveling little secrets about her past and then all of a sudden the rebel queen is taken prisoner but she is like pretty much out of it completely and in order for the rebel queen to leave the prison she has to go through trials three different four different trials based on elements so fire water air earth um, and since the rebel queen is so sick to the point that she can't even lift a finger, Kiva decides to take her place in the trials. So if Kiva survives the trials, both she, the rebel queen, and this boy named, um, I forgot his name, <clears throat> oh, Tip, get to leave the prison. So it is so good. Highly recommend it. It's the first book in a trilogy. The writing is very fast paced. Like I think I finished this in like two days and I couldn't put it down. Um, I do have the next two books which are right right over here. Um, I do plan on picking them up maybe this month or in March to finish the trilogy because I'm currently in the middle of a series which I will talk about in a bit. But yeah, five out of five stars. Next, I ended up picking up another audiobook. And that was Symphony of Secrets by Brandon Slocum. This was a very good audiobook. I gave it four out of five stars. One of the reasons why was because I felt like 30% of the book was very dragged out. And I ended up skimming through the audiobook because I was kind of like, oh my god, let's get on with it type of scenario. I just felt like the book could have been 100 pages less, you know? But it was a really good book. I highly recommend picking it up. It is about a um uh a white artist who pretty much took credit for a black artist's um music and lyrics and plays and piano songs and uh, like writing uh, their music pretty much and he ended up getting all the fame all the glory and she didn't and this it was really sad and then in modern day time this black professor get the opportunity to kind of clean up and decipher that artist's his, um the white artist's work and then he kind of unravels the secrets that oh my god he stole this black woman's work from the 80s or whatever and this is wrong and he wants to kind of expose the industry it is really really good highly recommend it i will say it's very slow some of the situations are so dragged out to the point where i just didn't really care but it was still so good and it does make you think like a lot of white artists from back then did take credit for a lot of black artists work and it's really sad but it was a really good book you guys highly recommend checking it out the audiobook is good too i really like the narrator i think they did a good job and next and last book that i read in january and the series i'm currently reading and am vlogging for you guys is throne of glass by sarah j mass I ended up picking up and finishing the first book in the series, um, Throne of Glass, and I loved it. So you follow a girl named Selena, who is like the world's best assassin, and she is giving she is given a deal by the king and the prince that if she wins and becomes their champion, she will be taken out of that prison, and she only has to work for them for about four years, and then she get gains her freedom back. So she accepts. And she kind of like is brought to the castle. She has to be cleaned up because she's been in like this prison for a while. She's just a mess. And she has to compete in these different challenges in order to become the king's champion. So she can finally gain her freedom in a few years. And there's a love triangle. And there's fae and portals. And it's just crazy, you guys. I really love this book. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I can't wait to continue the series and share my thoughts with you guys in my weekly reading vlogs. So good. So good. So I had a really good reading month, I think. So these, those were the books I read in the month of January. Nine books, you guys. I do not count the DNF book. Um, if I did finish that one, that would have been 10 books. 
that's like a lot you know but i'm trying my hardest to get through my physical tbr because i still have so many and i would love to finish my physical tbr unwrapping challenge this year that would be just amazing so these are the books that i read and i hope you guys enjoyed this video please comment like and subscribe join my little family here on youtube let's grow together as a community and i'll see you guys in my next video bye